I've never played before, bro. Just gotta walk me through it. I'm gonna embarrass myself. Okay, so um, the first thing that you need to pick is um, a race. So okay. you can be Zerg or Terran or uh, Protoss. I feel like it makes sense to be Terran. Yeah, so Terran is like sort of like an extension of the human race. So there's Marines, so those are guys that shoot guns. Uh, there's medics, so you know, standard army setup. So it's, yeah. it'll be easier to process. Hold up. Never by Microsoft. <laughs> You're running Microsoft on a Mac? No, this is a Windows Surface. Oh, really? Yeah. Dude, my computer's 2014, so I was gonna bring it, mm. and I just feel like it wouldn't even be able to handle this. Mm. Even though this is like a very low production quality game, right? Maybe it would be able to handle it. StarCraft, I will have you know, my friend, is a work of beauty. <laughs> Listen, I don't mean to shit on StarCraft, I'm just saying. The goal of this game is to what again? Uh, it's, to, it's to kill your enemies. <laughs> is this like your way of unwinding? Yeah, this is super fun. Um, also, um, like a lot of the people in my circle play StarCraft. Yeah. So it's really easy. Okay, so you have a lot of resources at this point and your unit count is full. So the first thing that you want to do is that you want to put up a supply depot. So you do B, S, and then these are basically things, these are essentially homes for your units, so it allows you to build more things. Okay. And then this is a barrack, so you want to build two, because you want to build a decent amount of units. But really, you don't really need to do this to get the basics of the game. All you need to produce are Marines. Got it. And they fight for us. Yes. So this is really like a strategy game. Yes. Not exactly first person shooter. No, not at all. This kind of reminds me of, uh, you remember that Wolf, Wolf game? First person shooter Wolf game that was always on like Microsoft computers? Wolf. It's like you're a dude, you're going through, I think it was Wolf. It's like a German. Hmm. I was never too much into FPS. Like the only thing that I played was Counter Strike. Yeah, it's pretty classic. And we've basically won by this point because they don't they don't really have defensive units. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all this basically runs. You watch. Right. Some people might play like uh, basketball or golf. Right. What does this game teach you, really? This game? Yeah. Hmm. Like they say, like you learn a, a lot about yourself in Little League. What? Or it teaches, uh, it teaches fortitude. Little League teaches you fortitude? Yeah, Little League is like where you learn life lessons. You learn how to work together. You learn uh, how to respond from struggle and adversity. Well, I guess StarCraft teaches you help your allies uh -huh. and kill your enemies. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Yeah. The same life lessons you learn in Little League. Uh, of course. Of course. <laughs> what, what is it about the strategy that you like? Well, so if you play with other people at your level, it's very, um, it's very brain power intensive. In this, well, it's not hard per se, but it it takes a lot of your time, and it takes a lot of effort while playing the game. So, uh, for me. It was one of those ways where it was very easy to deal with stress because um, like the way that I, I like to think about stress is there's just like a lot of thoughts going on in your head. And like one of the things that I've always tried to tell myself is you should only care about things that matter, A, and B, something that you can do about. And usually when you're stressed is because you're thinking over and over about things that you really can't do anything about. For example, if you got like a bad grade, yeah. like it doesn't matter, A, and B, you can't do anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so there's like a number of things that you could do to um, sort of quiet the voices in your head. 
And so for some people, it's sports. Yeah. yeah. And then you talked about, I mean, you talked about not sleeping for eight days during the crash, but after when you were trying to like kind of disconnect, like you said, you didn't want to read anything. How much StarCraft helped in that? So I haven't played too, too much. Um, I wouldn't say recently I've been stressed, yeah. per se, um, because well, once again, like there isn't really that much that I can do to deal with like the external pressure that's coming in. So, um, I've just been, you know, thinking about uh, what to do and things like that. But it's it's more like there's a difference between grief and stress. Yeah. Right. Um, grief is just like an emotion that you need to process, and stress is you trying to strategize about something that cannot be strategized. At what point do you know you've won, though? Uh, when I eliminate all the enemies, but it's, I mean, computers suck, so. Your computer sucks? No, no. The um, computer you're playing against. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you already basically know you've already won. I don't know, we'll see. I feel like if I had more time to train, that would have gone differently. Yeah, I feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, if this is your way of understanding life, mm -hmm. how does this correspond to what happened with Tara? Is there a connection? Well, I mean, I mean, I just played and I wish I had more time to prepare if I had built up my defenses stronger. Mm. This probably would have gone differently. Yeah, I, well, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I extrapolated large lessons from StarCraft to apply to Terra, but um, as, as I said, it's more of a de-stressing type of mechanism, but... I, mean, I guess if it's a direct metaphor, that wouldn't very much be de-stressing. Right. I don't know, it was confusing. I was trying to connect the dots to the metaphor. And StarCraft's not a metaphor, I was trying to figure out that one. Oh, no, what I mean is, when people first start to fall down the rabbit hole of like wanting to be an entrepreneur, yeah. It's generally for, you know, reasons like wanting to become wealthy uh, or things like that. And then um, the, the, the point is, like, even if you, after you've sort of hit your introductory goals, um, your motivations kind of change because the sort of the responsibilities that you've taken on that compel you to want to be successful for different reasons. Yeah. And I think the common thread of building a strong community, or it's not even building a strong community, but like um, I think the best communities sort of arise in crypto as sort of a side effect of something else. Mm -hmm. And I think that just comes to comes from not from like like how exciting the project is or anything of that sort, but it's really about like whether the people that are a part of that community want to spend time trying to make others as successful as possible. I could see that. The goals in, in mind when you say measuring success, I guess change by default, because it gets to be bigger. You've got to worry about the communities you're trying to right. help out. And like, I guess if it no longer becomes about you achieving success, it becomes about their goals, you become altruistic, and if, you know, if it grows so big, you basically are no longer serving your best interests or your success, you're serving the communities. Right. Which when that happens, if you need to kind of, I guess, you know, make sure that the growth of it continues, mm. maybe you start to do things that you wouldn't otherwise. Mm. As far as like... I think... Yeah, I, I mean, there's very few things that you would do when you're just thinking about, you know, uh, personal returns or on another level, like shareholder returns and things like that. Yeah. Uh, all you need to do is make money, right? That's, that's the only thing you need to care about. Mm -hmm. But the types of decisions that you need to make when um, your goals are a little bit more nuanced than that is, yeah, so there's a lot more to, to, to think about. Yeah, like when it no longer just becomes growing the Terra ecosystem and it's like, okay, you can use 
UST growing in terms of total value locked and anchor, or you can use all those things as a measure of success. But if like that becomes your yardstick, mm -hmm. then you basically, you can never stop, I guess. Right. Right? Yeah. Does that like lead you to kind of like stretch the truth in areas where it's like, well, maybe that didn't happen, but it's like you can't not keep the momentum going. Momentum. Mm. Mm. Well, I think a community becomes successful in one of two different ways, right? So they can either do it by making money, right? Or they can do it by, you know, choosing to spend time doing things that they otherwise couldn't see themselves doing. Yeah. So I think one of the sort of, you know, the, the things that I felt, you know, the, the proudest about while working on Terra is having converted a lot of people to work in Web3. Yeah. Right? So there were a lot of people that were just casual investors, just buying coins and things like that uh, in the, you know, Terra ecosystem. And then they made the jump to, you know, do other things, leave their Web2 jobs. Yeah. But I guess at what point did that shift? Like, when did that become the measuring stick versus just growing? Mm. That's a good question. It's a slow evolutionary process. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just feel like, you know, like what we said yesterday, and it's like, all right, you come from a school, you use like a yardstick, like, okay, get into a good school, you achieve that. Things like as you grow, the yardsticks become less clear. You don't even know how to measure success. Hmm. And it's like in crypto, it's very easy because it's like number go up, price go up. Everyone's talking about a project. People want to work on the project, build on the project. It's like you have the option to choose how quickly you want to grow. And if the goal no longer becomes just number go up, but like community gets bigger, hmm. then I feel like, you know, I guess that would change the way I look at it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's over time. I, I just realized that I was spending the way that I was making decisions or doing things was a little bit different than what I saw myself doing when I was in college. Yeah. Um, so I think it just happened slowly. It would also make me way more stressed, I would think. Because like, it's no longer, again, just my yardstick. It's like everyone else who's attached to me is yardstick. Right. Well, but once again, like, I think stress happens when you're trying to strategize about like your ideals being not in line with your reality. Yeah. So like even if your goals are to pers like personally make a lot of money, if that number is always try to make as much as possible, mm -hmm. then you're never going to reach that ideal. So I can see that being even more stressful as well. Yeah. On the downside though, like when it was collapsing, like we talked about when you're in that moment and then afterwards, it's not just your success and failure now. It's like everyone who quit their Web2 jobs to build a Web3. Right. That weighs heavily. Yeah. yeah. How has that weighed on you? Yeah. So I think, so obviously I don't, I don't really have, you know, a relationship with everyone in the parent community. And yeah. I only know a very small subset of people, but, um, I think in terms of, you know, like people that were building, uh, that were betting companies or uh, building companies or um, working in companies, we managed to find sort of like a soft landing mm -hmm. uh, for most of those people, at least those that um, our team had connections to or could reach. Yeah. Um, and Web3 is still like the future, right? So uh, I think uh, for talent with experience having worked in the Terra ecosystem, uh, which is one of the ways, reasons why other ecosystem setting up funds or uh, going on a hiring spree for a lot of people in the Terra ecosystem was actually something that's valuable because yeah. it helps those people, um, you know, find places to be where they don't have to worry about leaving Web3 in order to be able to pay, uh, feed their families. 
But how does it weigh on you, like yourself? Like I, I'm starting a company right now. It's nowhere near as large, nowhere near as many people counting on me. Mm. Five. Mm. Nate's one of them. Um, and it's like, you know, that's way smaller in a scale. And even I am stressed to the point of, you know, you don't sleep as well, you gain weight, your hair falls, like that stress manifested physically, mm. right? Yes. And um, that's what I'm dealing with. And that's not even, that's a small, tiny fraction of what I imagine. Yeah. Eight days of no sleep and a burrito over a week does to a man. <laughs> Are you asking what my weight is? <laughs> I'm not asking you what your weight is. Yeah. But how it impacted you. I mean, you just put it so well, right? It's... The amount of loss um, that like emanated from Terra's failure, just like the magnitudes is incredibly high. So... Uh, yeah, so when it first started to happen and I started to have conversations with, uh, you know, Terra community members and builders that had to deal with that loss, I, yeah, I went into a state of shock mm -hmm. for a little bit. Um, and then I think after that, like, I just, you know, uh, try to get myself to be in a place where I could pick up the phone and try to be as helpful as possible. So for people that, needed to get jobs, help them do intros, people that needed to raise funding, um, you know, call up people that I knew so that they can discuss some sort of acquisition or distress yeah. financing. But I guess, you know, reflecting on it, there's a question of that's not something a guy would do if he didn't care at all, right? You wouldn't make those calls. If it's failure versus fraud, you just leave it alone, right. which I think shows you care. I'm still trying to figure out, like, again, with all the allegations out there and like just looking for what really happened and what you want to clear up, it seems like there's a fine line between failure and fraud. And you've said that everything you've done matches up with this being a thing you tried and it didn't pan out. But I mean, as you like look back at things, what's your take on, I guess, how you define fraud. Mm. 